Welcome to CivilNet. We have a very special guest here in our studio, Dr. Rita Sulayan Kuyumjan. Uh, Rita, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Thank uh, you for having me. We had a, a very happy meeting yesterday. Um, and when I found out that you are the author of this book, Archaeology of Madness, uh, about Gomidas, which I had read about 10 years ago. Uh, and so I found out that you are the author and you are here in Armenia because your book, which was published about 15 years ago, uh, has now been translated into Armenian and you're here for the book launch. How does that make you feel? Wonderful, wonderful. I, uh, uh, it was uh, very interesting, these translations. Uh, the first translation was into Turkish, and it was a very interesting feeling to be in Turkey for the launching of the Turkish version of the book. Now in Armenia, the Armenian version, it makes it a very special. Uh, I, I know that uh, there will be lots of, uh, I'm hoping and I know that there will be lots of interest because this book really, uh, the idea of this book was to break uh, uh, break any formed, very rigid formed opinions mm -hmm. about Comidas and uh, in this book, Komidas is humanized. Mm -hmm. He's human, and uh, we, I have to tell you that Armenian people loved him before he became a martyr, so-called martyr, uh, before he became ill after 1915, uh, that he was um, incarcerated in, in Changar um, concentration camp. And uh, before that, Armenian people loved him everywhere. Therefore, we, 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 we are capable uh, of loving Komidas as a human being, not necessarily as a saint or a martyr. I want to emphasize that. And this is the core of this book. He's human, we love him as a human also. You're a psychiatrist. Yes. Um, and you looked at it from that perspective as well yes. when you're looking at uh, his life. Um, I want to read a passage. Because it is now the centenary uh, of the Armenian Genocide, uh, we are um, the world, the Armenian nation, the Armenian people are commemorating a hundred years of, a, of, of an event that really shaped the consciousness of a collective uh, identity, really. Um, this particular passage was, is very striking, I think, for me. Um, you see, two great strands of human life are interwoven in the Armenian psyche, suffering and art. In profound ways, Gomidas's life is one of the clearest manifestations of this psychic trait. Armenians conceive of suffering as a national phenomenon, for suffering has served them as a people. It has strengthened their determination to survive. Now this was true, I would argue, for the first century following the Armenian Genocide. Um, can we ever break free from that national psyche of suffering, of feeling comfortable in melancholy? I, I hope so. When I walk on the streets of Yerevan and I hear the giggling of the youth and the children, I just feel we, we will break away from that melancholy. Uh, there was an international study looking at the children of the world and uh, they, they found that Armenian children in Armenia are the happiest children. So I think we'll be able to break away from that. And um, th this, is a, this would be our future if, if nationally we accept that there is another, um, another fate waits, waits us and we strive for it. Um, more prosperous life, more secure life, more less frightened, then I think uh, that might change. We have to create art differently. It does not have to be necessarily uh, melancholic art. But our past history was different. Our past history, now we have a country, and uh, whoever has a country does not need to feel sad. It, we will feel the challenge of maintaining of our country. We have to work very, very hard. We have to build a civil society. But to be sad, we don't have to be sad anymore. Um, they say that um, denial is the last stage of genocide and that perhaps we haven't been able to heal properly because it hasn't been acknowledged. Um, and even now, uh, I think all of us understand that Turkey, Turkish civil society, the Turkish government is not ready to acknowledge the crimes of its past and upon which the modern Turkish Republic was formed, really, uh, upon the ruins of the Armenian nation. 
And now as we enter the next century, uh, you said we have a country and we have to work. It's a challenge to build that country that we shouldn't be sad. But can we really um, let go or should we let go or, is, or it has been embedded somehow in our genetic code and we can't seem to let go of those wounds that don't seem to be uh, healing yet? I think um, if, we, we will, if we can start a dialogue with Tur Turkish people, meaningful dialogue, yeah. not superficial dialogues, on a government level, like a reconciliation committee where people talk to each other and forgive each other, maybe we'll be able to let it go. The other way to let it go is reparation. I think we have to get reparation for our losses. Sometimes um, I think about Comidas, what kind of reparation we need this government, these Turkish people have to give us to be able to really um, replace the loss, the cultural loss that we had. If Comidas had stayed, he couldn't function after 1915 and he stopped, uh, he stopped producing. And what kind of monetary reparation we need to replace what we've lost as a nation from his cultural creative output that we've lost. So therefore, we have to have a reparation from reparation to be able to let go of the, and uh, the only way we can let go also if our country prospers. If, if, if Armenia prospers, poverty is not an, as big of an issue, and as it is now, I think at that time we'll be able to let go. We have to, the human beings are like that. Uh, we would like to turn our other face and to say like the Bible says, but I think that doesn't work anymore in this society. We have to have reparations. It's very hard for the Turkish society to accept, uh, for the youth to accept their grandfathers were murderers. And sometimes I put myself in their shoes. I say, would I, it, is it psychologically very hard, monetarily very hard? It's going to shake the Turkish society to do this reparation. But it has to be done for us to be able to let go. Um, it doesn't mean that we have to stay behind to really, uh, to really c continue with this process. We will forge ahead with all our power, but we still have to ask for reparation. Monetary rep reparation, moral reparation, like uh, Pope Francis did. It was a humongous uplift yes. for us, From morally, for all of us, for all of Armenians. That that it was acknowledged from that kind of a moral authority that is in the world presently. When, when I read your book, it had a great impact on me. Um, uh, Gomidas certainly is revered for Armenians. Um, and and w now when you speak about his loss and, and the loss of his ability, the loss of his cultural output, um, it, it, it really resonates because it wasn't only Gomidas. We lost all of those intellectuals, the writers, the poets, the artists, and, and all of that. It's not only the one and a half million lives, which, which certainly is an astounding number, but it's also the potential that was stolen. Which we don't talk about very which we much. Don't talk, we don't the like potential of, I always imagine, if there was this amount of people continued to live, our Armenian nation, where would we be? Today? And now how, how little we are. And uh, you know, this uh, you can multiply that loss. Each one is a, would form a family, and then grandchildren and children. And if, Goma, if Gomidas could speak today, because you are obviously uh, now a, an expert on his life uh, and his uh, and his death, and 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 the legacy that he left, if he could speak to us today, what do you think his message would be? Oh, hmm, interesting. Well, it would his message would be to um, to forge ahead to forge ahead and achieve our dreams as a nation. Komidas had a dream himself, for example, in his specialty, he wanted to, have to build a conservatory and really establish the roots of Armenian music and really classical music. And uh, as, a, as a proud nation, to be able to have our own say in one of the arts sphere. And it would say to us that uh, forge ahead, be strong, get together and create a nation that can last, achieve democracy. It's hard coming from a Soviet Union background 
to achieve real democracy where people respect each other, when the government respects the citizens, and, uh, and build a strong nation with our beautiful youth that we have. Komandas loved his students and the youth. He was nurtured by them. So Komandas is one of the major impact that he had from the um, from the army to, from be, being the first who was incarcerated. He was incarcerated in uh, on the eve of uh, 19, uh, April 24, 1915, with other intellectuals. So his loss, he didn't see any massacres yet because they were the first. Right. But the experience, he experienced, he knew what was coming. And all the intellectuals, that was the crop, the cream de la crème of the society, of Armenian society in Constantinople that was arrested that night, he knew that part will be demolished or will, be, will, be, uh, will not be able to continue to lead the nation. So our youth is our potential for future. He would have, he would have said, forge ahead and believe in your uh, uh, believe in your abilities to create a nation that will never die, that will never die. And one we could be proud of. One we could be proud of. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. I'd like to remind our viewers that my guest was Dr. Rita Sulayan Kuyumjan. She's a psychiatrist, an expert on Gomidas, whose book, Archaeology of Madness, Gomidas, Portrait of an Armenian Icon, has just recently been uh, translated and published in Armenian. Stay with Civilnet. Thank you.